Hey, what is going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the two game uh, CSGO early slate as well as the four game main slate uh, on Saturday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I make daily videos breaking down NBA, NFL, PGA, and esports daily fantasy sports slates. Real quick, I do want to say thank you guys again for all the support. Seriously, on the YouTube, uh, in the comment section, the live streams, and on Twitter. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Um, the easiest way to support me with all the content being free is just leave a like button in the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't want to upload videos and you don't want to go live. Also, if you guys cannot watch YouTube videos, I do upload on Apple Podcasts. The link is in the description below, which is the DK DFS show. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So, it is almost midnight on a Friday night, but wanted to grind out this video for you guys. I know a ton of you guys have been asking me about CSGO, on, and I've actually been on an insane stretch the last couple days uh, for CSGO at least. So, before we talk about the two games early slate and the main slate, um, let's quickly go over my lineups for the last couple days. So, this was two days ago or three days ago. Um, this was just in the in the um, the big ten dollar tournament. Uh, I finished fifth place, was seven points away. Uh, basically, ran a two 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 stack. This was a slate where there was a ton of favorites. I ran hundred thieves, uh, Furia, and um, EG. Again, basically using a, a lot of the value. Um, it was really close there. And then today was three basically three points away. Um, from from the 5K to first uh, top prize, finished with, with $750. So uh, no complaining at all, but was super, super close there. Uh, and this one, it was only a two-game uh, slate, so I went with a 3-2-1 a two, two, stack uh, with Brolon and the captain. Paired with, with Crims, I used a one-off Blame F just because Blame F is uh, basically unfadeable. Uh, and then I ran a three-man phase stack to kind of get it a little bit contrarian. I knew that big would be more popular, so... Um, yeah, just thought I would, I would recap the last couple of days here for CSGO. It's not like I haven't been playing, uh, but again, going to, uh, you know, get up these videos more for you guys consistently, because I know a lot of you do like them. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the odds here for this, for the two game slate first. Uh, so it starts at 7 a.m. Central. We have OG and Fnatic. Basically, pick them right. OG slight favorites, and then Vitality Phase Clan, Vitality minus 190 favorites. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the prices here. We're start, we will start on the Fnatic side. And, you know, looking at their prices, um, you know, the top two, at least, especially Brolon, looks really, really good here. Crim's at 8K, but Brolon at only 7K. I, I know OG's the slight favorites, but I really do like that price on Brolon. He went absolutely off last game. Um, you know, if you uh, go over to hltv.org, which is where I, I look at all my snap, or all my stats, I should say, uh, you can see uh, the player stats for the last three months. Brolon has been, um, him and Crims basically have been the top two players here, almost identical, um, you know, stats here. Brolon, 0.72, kills from 0.67, deaths from Crims, 0.72 and 0.66. So um, I like both those guys, uh, but I do prefer Brolon for his price. As far as anyone else in this roster, we have Golden at 6.6, JW 5.8, Flush at 5K. Um, normally, Golden is the is the cheapest guy in this team, so it is a little bit surprising that he actually is the third most expensive. He's been in decent form, but I'm gonna prefer Flusha for his price, right? Like neither him, JW, or Golden have been great, but you have Flusha at the cheapest at 5K, and normally, like, like Flusha is the number three for this team. So with him being the min price or him him being the cheapest, and he's been in relatively decent form. If you look at just you know the recent games here. Last three, uh, last three or four days here, 66 and 64, 38 and 44, 39 and 41. So hovering right around a 1.0 KD, but that price, that looks pretty decent. So that's kind of, those are the players that I'm eyeing for Fnatic. Uh, Brolon being my favorite, then Crims, and then Flusher for his price. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the OG side now. So again, OG slight favorites here. Both teams, if you look at their recent form too, they've won three of the last five. OG does have the slight uh, head-to-head or advantage here, winning 4-2-1 over Fnatic. So, uh, let's take a look at OG and the, and the prices. And, again, some weird prices here in DraftKings. Valde is the most expensive at 9K. I know he had a really, really good game today. Uh, but it's Mantu for me at his price that is just way too cheap, in my opinion. 7.8K, that is, uh, he is their opper. Um, if you guys aren't really familiar with CSGO, uh, the player that uses the op, usually only one on each team, sometimes players or teams will run two ops, um, is the most powerful weapon in the game. 
Um, and Mantu is the guy that uses it on this team. He's got really, really good numbers, too. But look at the last three months, 0.71 kills pound, 0.59 deaths pound. Valde coming in at less than that, right, 0.7 and 0.64, and he's over $1,000 more expensive. So uh, I think drafting kind of mess with the pricing here. Mantu is, is in my opinion, again, one of the best plays at that price. Uh, as far as, you know, value here, uh, a guy like Issa uh, I think looks pretty decent at, at under 7K. He's coming at 6.8K. If you ha- head back over to HLTV.org, 0.7 kills from 0.63 deaths from a 1.11 rain 2.0. He's right up there with Mantu and Valde for, for leading this team. So I think Issa looks pretty decent for value. Uh, Alexi B uh, is coming in at 6K. Not overly excited about that, uh, but NBK. Um, I don't mind the price in him. Again, hit, if you go back over here, uh, you know, basically very, very close with, with him and Alexi B. B of NBK at about $1,000 cheaper. So um, that's kind of how I, I, I kind of break down OG. I, I think Mantu is the clear play. I don't mind Valde. I think he's a little bit pricey, but you can still go there. Um, and then Issa uh, and NBK for value. Let's talk about the Vitality phase side. And then I'll quickly talk about roster instruction, and then we can move on to the main slate. So Vitality... For me, Zaiwu is just unfadeable. Um, sure, if, if Vitality gets 2 0 then he probably doesn't have an, an amazing game. But right now, his floor is basically 50 or 60 uh, fantasy points. 0.81 kills round, 0.62 deaths round. He's also their opera, 1.27 rating 2.0. Just insane. Um, Zaiwu is one of the best, if not the best players right now in Counter Strike. So, um, sure, I mean, he's going to be the ultimate chalk. He'll probably be 80, 90% owned. If you want to get different, fine. I'm not. I'm playing Zaiwu. Uh, I'll look to get different, different elsewhere. Now, with the rest of the team, it's a little bit more balanced from there. Shox has been kind of the number two. He's right now hovering at 0.67 kills round, 0.64 deaths round. We can hover, or we can go through everyone else. RPK, 0.65 and 0.69. Apex, 0.63 and 0.68. Masuda, 0.59 and 0.66. So everyone besides Shox, a, a little bit below 1.0 KD. Shox at 8.6, again, feels a little bit pricey to me. I don't hate it if you want to go with three-man vitality stack. That's fine. Uh, but for like, I'm definitely prioritizing uh, Zaiwu for a little bit more than Shox. As far as the value plays of Apex, RPK, and Masuda, or Masuda, uh, it's probably going to be RPK um, at that price, 6.4. He's been you know kind of consistent here. I don't think he's going to kill you. He would probably be the next guy I would pick uh, out of the Vitality group, uh, but not really a strong take. Like Apex and Masuda are all similar plays. It's just you know a price tag thing, I guess. So really for me on the Vitality side, it's definitely Zyvo, again, not a contrarian take. Uh, Shocks feels a little pricey, but still in play. Uh, and then probably RPK uh, if you wanted me to pri- or pick one of those value guys in Vitality. Moving on to FaZe. FaZe had actually really struggled up until recently, like last few games. Uh, they actually have won four of the last five, but before that they were on an insane losing streak. This one's tricky. They, they beat a good uh, big team. They beat Heroic, Complexity, NIP, so... Um, Let's take a look at, uh, well, let's scroll through their, the player stats first. So Nico is is their, uh, you know, their top player coming at 0.74 kills round, 0.71 deaths round. Rain, 0.60 and 0.69. Kajer B, 0.57 and 0.66. Cold at 0.61 and 0.65. Brokey's been really, really playing well with the op, 0.72 and 0.63 of recently. So um, let's go back to draft because now look at the prices. With Nico at 8-2, Brokey at 7-6, Cold at 6-4, Rain at 5-4, Kaja B at 4-8. Um, yeah, I think the price looks pretty good here in Nico. Uh, now, do you necessarily have to play him? No, uh, but he's a guy that can definitely go for 100 fancy points. Maybe not as much upside as Zaiwu, but uh, he, he's close, uh, and you're getting him at a nice discount. So I do really like Nico at that price. Brokey, another guy, again, he's been really, really good form. Besides that one bad game there against OG, um, he has been playing really, really good Counter Strike with the op. Don't mind Coles; uh, hasn't been in the best form, but the price looks pretty decent. So, it, for me, it's the top three guys in phase. Uh, I'm probably not going to look to Kaja B. Rain a five four, fringe playable, but I would rather just pay a little bit more for Cold. So let's talk about roster construction. On a two game slate, you will see a lot of people go with three three stack, um, but you know, don't rule out going like a, a three two one right or, or two two two. And captains, like, who am I, who am I considering? I want to go for the upside. So, guys, I'm considering Zywu, Nico, Mantu, Brolon. I'm considering the top guys basically in every single team, which is those are the guys, right? Brolon for Fnatic, Mantu for OG, Zywu for Vitality, and Nico for FaZe. Those are the guys that I, I want to look to. If you want to go value to try to jam in, like, everyone at the top, like, 
sure, maybe you can go with a guy like NBK, right? So if you, pl if you plug NBK or Flusher in there, like one of those cheap guys, then you have 8.4K remaining. You can basically plug whoever else you want in there. So that's always a build, but for me, it's going to be one of the, it's going to be the top guy in each team. Again, Zaiwu, Nico, Mantu, and, and Brol on the guys that I'm considering for the captain spot. So, all right, let, that's enough for the early slate. Let's talk about the main slate now. And let me go to, uh, this one locks at 2 p.m. Central. So let's take a look at the odds for, for this four-game slate. And there are some huge favorites here. You have 100 Thieves, uh, Team 1, 100 Thieves minus 400 favorites. So pretty big favorites, but actually uh, two teams are, are way heavily favored more. Uh, RB, RBG Esports and Mythic is basically a pick them. EG and Rebirth, EG are minus 10,000 favorites. And Fear and Imperium, uh, Fear, it's not even on the board right now. Uh, it, has, it says minus 5,000, but I think it's, it's more than that. Uh, Imperium is, is the worst team in this tournament by far. So, um, let's let's go team by team here. So for me, again, I guess go, let's go back to odds really quick. The way that I'm approaching this slate is this RBG Mythic game. Uh, I'm just crossing it off. It's basically a pick 'em. They're, they're tier two teams. I don't want to risk targeting either team. To be honest, if you if you guys want to take that risk, fine. But for me, the way I'm attacking the slate, I'm just crossing off that game. I don't have confidence in it, um, and I'm targeting the favorites. So. I'm, tar I'm, not, I'm not looking to Team 1, I'm not looking to Rebirth, I'm not looking to Imperium. Basically, my player pool for this main slate is going to be 100 Thieves, EG, and Furia, and that's it. So, 15 guys that I'm considering, again, I'm not considering the underdogs. So, if you want to get risky and consider T1, Rebirth, Imperium, fine. Again, I told you guys I'm crossing off this game. The way I'm approaching it is I'm literally uh, only using players from, this, from these three teams. And uh, you can definitely make a, a lineup you're comfortable with with, uh, with this group. So first, let's go to 100 Thieves uh, versus... Uh, actually, wait, hold on. This is not the right game. It has 100 Thieves Liquid. 100 Thieves and Team 1. There we go. So if any team would, you know, possibly could pull off the upset, it probably could be Team 1. So if you want to consider... You know, guys on this roster, it's probably Barton or PRT. They have the best stats. Uh, if you go back over to DraftKings, look at their prices. Um, let's go to them really quick. Let me get off EG and Furia. Barton at 7.8, PRT 6.8. I guess I do prefer PRT for the discount. But, again, I told you guys how I'm approaching this slate. I'm attacking the favorites. Uh, so we'll, let's take a look at 100 Thieves and the prices. We have JKS 9.6, Radish Faction 9.2, Jakeem uh, 8.6, Lias 8.74, and AZR 6.4. 100 Thieves are 6'6". 100 Thieves is a pretty balanced team if you scroll through their stats. Like JKS is the number one player, 0.72 kills from 0.64 deaths from, but everyone else is you know, pretty solid. AZR hovering around a 1.0 KD, Jakeem 1.0 KD, Gratis Faction with the AWP about a 1.0 KD, Elias, same, almost the same thing, right? So it's a really, really balanced roster. And look at the prices. Like I like the price in AZR a lot. He's been really consistent. Um, besides that last game uh, against Chaos, 71, 56, 71, 61, 62, 73, 69. Like, you can just scroll down. Like, he's been really, really consistent. And I just think the price looks good at him. So, AZR for value is definitely uh, one, of the, one of the better plays, in my opinion. Um, again, don't mind JKS. It's just you might have to sacrifice a little bit at 9 6. But uh, with him and Gratis Faction, definitely prefer getting to JKS over Gratis Faction. Uh, in the mid range, it's going to be Jakeem for me over Liaz. So, I guess the guys I'm considering on these would, would be JKS, Jakeem. AZR um, for their respective prices. And I told you guys I am crossing off this game. If you guys want to target that game and you want to take the risk, fine. I'm just I'm just not doing it. So let's talk about the EG side again. I'm not even considering anyone on Rebirth. Uh, I think EG should be able to take this one uh, pretty easily. But let's talk about players and their prices here. So Breeze at the top of 10.2 has been in really, really good form. Cirque, who uses the op at 9.4. Ethan at 8.8. Tariq at 8.2. And Stanislaw coming in at 7K. So let's go back to, let's scroll through their stats. So Stanislaw, not great. 0.58 kills round, 0.64 deaths round. But this is a really, really easy matchup. Again, the price definitely makes him in play. Tariq coming in at 0.68 and 0.68. So uh, basically 1.0 KD. Again, Breeze, been in amazing form. 0.81 kills round, 0.63 deaths round. Ethan, 0.69 to 0.65. Stars kills round, deaths round. And then Cirque, 0.72 and 0.63. 
So back to DraftKings and the prices. Yeah, like you, I, I'm not gonna complain at all if you try to get Breeze in there. I think he is one of the best, if not the best, spend up. He's been playing some. He's absolutely been on fire. Uh, Cirque also been in really, really good form at nine four. No issue there. Probably do prefer Breeze and Cirque to Ethan for the price. But if you get land in Ethan, fine. Again, I really don't have an issue with any of these guys. Uh, but Tariq Stanislaw for value, guys, I'm looking to for sure. Um, you know, Tariq at 8-2, Stanislaw at 7K. No, Stanislaw doesn't have the best numbers, but this is a game they should be able to win and should be able to 2-0. Um, if you guys, again, are a little bit unfamiliar with, with CSGO, if a team does 2-0, then you get a, a plus 20 bonus, that being 5 for the uh, the sweep, plus fi uh, 15 for rounds not played. It's a half a point for every round not played, 30 rounds. So it's a 20 points for a sweep if you if they do end up getting the 2-0 uh, bonus. Finally, Imperium versus Furia. There's absolutely no way I'm targeting anyone in Imperia, Imperium. So let's talk about Furia. Um, Vinny had a huge game. Uh, the last game actually did raise his stats. He's coming in at 0.71 kills round, 0.66 death round. Case Rada, 0.7 and 0.58. Yuri, 0.72 and 0.61. Art, 0.72 and 0.73. He's a very aggressive player. Uh, usually the first guy in the gunfights. And then Henny with the AWP, 0.73 and 0.57. So all the players obviously look good. Henny 10-6, Yuri 10K, K Serato 9K. Those are the top three players for me. Uh, give me K Serato. Uh, he's the cheapest of the bunch. That's usually how I attack it. You know, those three are the best players, and I'll always just go with whoever's the cheapest. So for me, it's K Serato. I do like Art 2 at 8 4. Um, he's just a very, very aggressive player. Usually a guy that's always, you know, the first one in the gunfights. And in this easy matchup, I could definitely see him having a big game. Like he has that upside games. He can go for, for 80, 90. So Art's a guy I'm considering. And finally, Vinny, too, had a really, really good game today. I think he's going to be popular for value. Again, he went for 91 fancy points, but just such an easy matchup that all, all the guys really look good here in Furia. So um, that's kind of how I'm tacking the slate, guys. Again, I told you, EG, Furia, 100 Thieves, that's my player pool. I'm not considering anyone else. If you guys want to take a different approach, that's fine, but I'm just targeting the big favorites here, and I'm not targeting anyone in the RBG Mythic game. It's just, you know, what's going to fit with my roster construction. So... Do I want to go someone cheap in the captain? Maybe like an AZR, right? 8K remaining. It's going to be a little bit difficult. A little bit difficult. Uh, obviously, you're not going to be able to, or it's going to be hard to get these guys at the top if you take my approach. Um, but if you are going to follow my lead, you're probably going to have to play some cheaper guys, right? So, uh, but that's the that's kind of how where I'm leaning is, is I'm probably going to play someone like an AZR or a Vinny or Stanislaw, someone cheap in the captain so I can get all the favorites uh, into my lineup. But I think that's going to do it for uh, the video today, guys. So if you haven't enjoyed the content so far, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload videos, you know when I go live. Um, again, guys, if you enjoyed this content, let me know. Uh, please. I know a lot of you guys are asking for CSGO videos, so uh, hit that like button and let me know in the comment section if you want, to if you want me to continue with these videos. Thanks again, uh, and I will see you guys all in the next video.